Aloha and welcome to What's Bugging You, brought to you by Hawaii's leader in pest control and the first company in Hawaii to earn the National Quality Pro Certification, Sandwich Isle Pest Solutions. Now, here's the host of our show, Mike Buck. Oh, perfect. I get to bug you a little bit on what's bugging you. Welcome back to the program if you've been here before. If, you, if this is your first time, I'm glad you found it. What's Bugging You is brought to you as a public service by Sandwich Isle Pest Solutions. My friend Michael Botha realized the power of this medium is terrific, and particularly when it comes to your house. And, you know, for many, many years, uh, you know, Sandwich Isle was Sandwich Isle Termite. Well, it's become way, way bigger than that. As a matter of fact, it's come to a point where not only is it every little creepy crawl that you can think of, but it's birds, it's rodents, it's even feral pigs. So it's Sandwich Isle Pest Solutions. And one of the great things about the company is as it's expanded, it's brought on some really great people uh, to work in various roles there. One of them which joins us today, uh, she is a, uh, a, a board-certified entomologist, uh, she's director of training at Sandwich Isle. She also has done research and, and training at universities, including University of Hawaii, where she does get involved. And it's sort of interesting because she not only gets to talk about her favorite subjects all the time, but gets to train people in opportunities at Sandwich Isle, which we'll talk about a little bit. Uh, Dr. Marisol Quintanilla is here once again. And Quintanilla or Quintanilla, however you say it, we say good morning. Hello. Good morning. How are you doing, Mike? Very, very well. You know, it's sort of interesting um, because when on our last program, we talked about bed bugs and cockroaches as part of the big approach. And it, and then I saw something interesting about Zika. So we got a lot to talk about today. Um, cockroaches and bed bugs. Was that part of your early learning experience, too, about entomology? Well, of course, in doing my master's and PhD training at Michigan State, uh, many of our, our classes we talked about bed bugs and mm -hmm. roaches and just about every single insect imaginable. Yeah. <laughs> what I'm concerned about is people are hesitant to come forward with either problem because they don't they feel embarrassed. We've talked about this before. Michael both and I've discussed this for years. There's sometimes people are embarrassed to admit that they have a bed bug or an uku problem or a head lice or a cockroach problem. Is it our fault or is it just where we live there are bugs or both? <laughs> well, um with bed bugs, mm -hmm. bed bugs are not necessarily associated with being dirty. Mm -hmm. Um bed bugs all they need to feed is some blood. So yeah. if you're alive yeah. and you have blood, yeah. you're a good host. Whether you're clean, whether you're dirty, whether you're rich, whether you're poor. It seems a lot more difficult these days, though, to keep them out of your environment. I mean, from what you what you said is that you, the calls have grown exponentially about bed bugs. Oh, yes. Uh, bed bugs have become big news mm -hmm. nationwide. Um, in Many years ago, the bed bugs were almost extinct in the United States. Really? But... Mm -hmm. Yeah, but in many countries, in many international countries, they persisted. And with all the international uh, travel, they definitely definitely making a comeback in the United States. And the products we have now are not as effective as some of the ones we well, had in I'm the past. I'm glad you said that, and we'll talk about that a little bit more. That's because, from what I understand in your industry, there have been so many restrictions put on some of the chemicals that used to be extremely efficient at eradicating things, but had other problems, whether yeah. they were side issues and caused, you know, cancer. Environmental and all these, problems. In, yeah. So, so in, in response to that, your industry has come up with new things that are may, maybe environmentally okay, but they don't work. Oh, they, they work. Mm -hmm. They work. Um, but they, they, their persistence might be lower mm -hmm. and they don't work as well okay. they they work but they don't work as well as some of the past okay ones. now one uh, i remember previous discussions one of the big enemies of bed bugs is heat oh yes you know, that's so very effective after a certain temperature that's it yes but what about the the crossing point on the graph when the temperature also might be able to burn your house down i mean you know yeah you know when you have well, a bed whole... bugs need only about 113 fahrenheit for them to die Okay, so that's not it's not bad. very high, yeah. but you have to think that that temperature needs to reach, you know, in behind the baseboard, yes, inside yes, yeah. the mattress, inside mm. the the bed, the box spring, you know, under it. It 
it needs to go in all every nook and cranny. So yeah. the temperature actually needs to be much higher. Right. You see, I, I, I react about that because uh, not too long ago in our Revolution program, Smarter Living with Revolution, we talked about that and how incredibly hot it is in our attic. So right now, if you have a, a regular home and inside your home is 75 degrees or 80 degrees, in your attic might be 110 or 120 degrees. It probably no bed bugs in your attic. And I would say that's probably <laughs> the cause. So that's that's the good news. But the bad news is. But they don't not... want to be in the attic anyway because mm. you don't sleep in the attic. Yeah, of course. They want to yeah. they want to drink your blood, so yeah. they like to be together with us. I know it reminds me of the old Dracula. I want to drink your blood. Yeah, that's, that's what all they. they that, that's in, all they do. A, that's all they do. You know? the, yeah, that but they don't, don't drink you, water, they don't eat anything else, they just drink blood. Don't you wonder, as a scientist, why do we even have them? What are they good for? I guess, you know, what are they? What's what purpose do they serve? They 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 serve the purpose to keep themselves alive. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, they're yeah. they're interested in their own benefit, not in ours. Does anybody eat them? Who are the enemies of bed bugs besides humans? Um, in in home situations. Mm-hmm. Not really. They don't yeah. really have many natural enemies. Um, bed bugs have become very adaptive to humans. And I'm sure there's some lizards and maybe some spiders that yeah. catch them once in a while, but um, nothing that can prov- provide real control. The bottom line is how do you prevent a bed bug invasion in your home? Once you, you, I guess identification, but how do you prevent it? There's several steps that can be taken mm-hmm. to prevent it. Mm-hmm. Um, People who travel are at highest risk to obtain of the, of getting yeah. bed bugs, you know, because it's easy to get them from hotel. Even very, very nice hotels, even five stars hotels yeah. can have bed bugs. Like remember, bed bugs are not necessarily associated with cleanliness. Mm-hmm. They're more associated with travel. Yeah. Um, so if you travel, you can get them. One of the best ways to prevent them is inspection. Mm-hmm. Check your bed once in a while. When yeah. you go to a hotel, before you go to sleep, you know, look up, look look underneath the, the, the sheets, look at the mattress, look at the box print, check if there's blood, you know, little yeah. tiny blood spots. Let's check check you know, it it's, out. It's sort of interesting you say that because I remember not too long ago where some, some very good hotels here in Hawaii had real issues and they had to yeah. do a lot of mitigation to get rid of the problem. Yeah. So you're giving them credit. I mean, obviously, they don't want their guests to be, you know, bitten or infected by bed bugs. But then you still got to ask the question, all right, how do you prevent taking them from your hotel home? So one guy said, well, you always use the stand for the suitcase. That they're, but what if happens if they're in the stand? I mean, they, they know, don't they? Well, um, one of the best ways is to put your stuff, your suitcase, mm-hmm. your bag, all your stuff inside the bathtub before you settle down in a hotel so you put it in the bathtub mm-hmm. because bathtub you know uh, it's very vertical right and it's hard for a bed bug to climb up the bathtub so and they you don't sleep in the bathroom so generally yeah, there's yeah, no yeah. bed bugs in the bathroom. i just learned you something just put very them valuable there. if you're going on a trip it may sound silly but go put the suitcases in the bathtub you put it in the bathtub mm-hmm. and then you check the bed you know check mm-hmm. behind yeah, yeah, the right, headboard right. check check the mattress etc check if there's signs of bed bugs if there is no bed bugs, no problem. If there is bed bugs, you have escaped free because your suitcase is in the bathtub. Yeah. But if you have put your suitcase right by the bed or by the floorboard, Guaranteed. maybe they're some there, they're get you. Some, yeah. somebody, some of them hit is hitching a ride on you, yeah. and you will not see them because they're hiding in the seams and mm. yeah. Yeah, and we're going to cover that some more in a little bit in the program. But first of all, I want to go back. One of the things that we do in the very issue is we we try to give you each program a little idea of some of the things that are in the news. Uh, Dr. Quintanilla has spent a lot of time, and we have, on the subject of uh, dengue fever. Uh, She's really experienced in that, had it herself. Uh, Also in this Zika virus. And I got concerned when I saw some news about the Zika virus uh, maybe now linked to other mental conditions. And I just saw that recently. Yeah, Guillain-Barre. So, yeah, and, and it, this is a very, very scary thing because uh, I guess you, you just, if if you get it, it's reversal is very difficult. So you, very you, difficult. you need to figure out a way to avoid the exposure. And there's some mortality associated mm-hmm. with it and possible paralysis, etc. cetera. Has uh, the recent uh, in, in interest in bed bugs and now in dengue, increased awareness of Zika. Are people in Hawaii calling up? Are they calling Sandwich Island saying, hey, I don't know if I got it, but I want to know, or if I get it, what can I do? 
of course, the interest has um, um, has risen. Mm -hmm. um, interesting that in the news, I just saw the news um, today. Um, my my country has a small Polynesian island called Easter Island. You mm -hmm. know where the big those yeah. big statues are, the big moines. By the way, when when uh, when Marisol talks about that, she talks about Easter Island, but uh, and her country it's is Chile. Ch Ch Chile, and that's how far the Chilean explorers went. You know, and some of the things. But this is very interesting because almost everybody thought Easter Island, those big heads, were all that was. But when you dig the hole, the whole body is there. Yeah. Way down, this yeah. huge big statue. Yeah, there's whole body. And a little place like that has the Zika virus. Well, actually, we have um, 27 cases of dengue right now. Oh, so I mean there's dengue. A, That's there's, I mean. Such, dengue. there's actually a dengue outbreak, just like we're, we're having in, mm -hmm. in the Big Island. And they're also But thinking the population that, is very small, isn't the it? The population is very small, mm -hmm. but they also have the Aedes mosquito. Yeah. So um, I just remember, remember how it, it's spreading in the Pacific Islands. This yeah. stuff is getting around in the Pacific Islands. I'm concerned because somebody told me the other day when I saw him in the store that listens to our program that, you know, we have this this flow back and forth from all of these islands every single day. Yeah, and there's, no, there's, there's flights. Yeah, and it's so difficult uh, to be the watchdog on everything. Somebody said, you know, when you go to Australia and in some places in New Zealand, before you get off the plane, they come along and they open the luggage and they shoot stuff and the chemicals in there and everything. Yeah, you know? yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, uh, that's it, happened to me. I've had people spray yeah. my feet or so before yeah, I got not the yeah, plane. Yeah. Um, and you, you can't help but agree that what they're doing probably makes some It makes sense. a lot yeah. of sense. There's a lot of things that come with people. Mm -hmm. A lot of insects, bacteria, viruses, you know, weed seeds that may be on yeah. the shoes, on the soil, and uh, all so many things yeah. that can cause tremendous damage. Somebody said, you know, a lot of things that they go on, they go on these on these vacations, echo vacations, where they go and they climb and they hike and they do all of these things, right? Yeah. So you're going through some jungle And they go back in the airplane full Island. of muddy shoes. Right, yeah, and yeah. there you go. It's a little... Uh, and you bring a, all kinds of new species yeah, with yeah. you. Weed seeds, all kinds of insect eggs, and yeah. Yeah, okay, well, and so uh, it's interesting because this breakout in Easter Island, it's a small population. That's quite a big number of cases. Yeah, it's it's quite and and it's actually the only place in my country that where we have the Aedes mosquito. Mm -hmm. The rest of the country doesn't have Aedes mosquito, so it's the only place at risk. And right now, it has now dengue. the Aedes mosquito that that Doctor Quintanella is talking about uh, is also uh, it's dengue. It also is a Zika virus. That's very yes. scary. Yeah, it can transmit dengue, it can transmit Zika. And we have to remember that Zika and dengue uh, dengue are very similar viruses, and Previous exposure to dengue, it, it is suspected that previous exposures to dengue make you more susceptible of getting complications mm -hmm. with Zika. If you yeah. get Zika and you've had dengue before, you have higher chance of having a child with birth defects or getting Guillain-Barre. From suspected. what I understand, uh, uh, Marisol, uh, most of the people in the civilized world, uh, they have this ability to present to a doctor what their record is and what they've had and what they haven't had. From in the parts of the world where this, these diseases are prevalent, uh, they don't have records. So if somebody had dengue and is now getting Zika, they may not have. You said some people have dengue, they don't even know it. Uh, well, dengue really hurts. So I think most mm. people that had dengue know that they had dengue. When I had dengue in, in Brazil and I started having the typical break bump pain, yeah, yeah. Um, just all the locals tell, told mm. me immediately that you have dengue. Oh, I mean, they all know. They, yeah. they, they, they all know. They it's all know. But wait, wait. You, you say that there are, of the, of the, there are four main strains of dengue. Do four all of them may hurt? Yes. Oh, all okay. of them hurt. I thought maybe one hurt, one didn't hurt. You know. That no, kind of they, 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 they all hurt. Mm -hmm. They all hurt. Yeah. Could you have the Zika virus and not know it? Oh yes. Mm -hmm. Um, about, um, only about twenty percent of people that get Zika virus. Mm -hmm get any symptoms at all wow. most people 80 percent of the people don't get any symptoms but if you are a childbearing age female uh if you have a zika even if you didn't know it this could cause a problem to your unborn baby um i suppose mm -hmm. that if you are sick if you know it mm -hmm. there's higher chance that your baby will get it because that means that there's a higher higher viral load mm. um so 
that there needs to be high concentration of virus inside yeah. in, inside in the, the placenta yeah, in, yeah, in yeah. the womb yeah. in order to cause significant damage. And that's one of the one of the suspicions that when people have, have had dengue before, um, the immune system kind of instead of helping you, it goes the other way yeah, and the say, virus remember. over multiplies and mm -hmm. you get you get um higher viral load mm -hmm. and that crosses to the placenta you know this is one thing that uh, that marisol and I, we discussed a few programs ago if you missed it now by the way in, in a very short order you're going to be able to go to sandwichisle.com and and get previous episodes of this program uh, on a special link that they'll have online so that you can talk and today it'll be it, when you go there it'll show you uh, roaches and bed bugs that's going to be the main topic today so that's what's going to be played and we want you to in in case you don't in case you're not able to listen to us go to sandwichisle.com and click on a link which is being established as we speak and speaking about that um, I want to tease the program today because we're, we're we're sort of finished with the news section but one thing we told you a while ago we we're going to talk about is bed bugs, and we are. The other thing is roaches. And the minute you say roaches, people get, ooh, roaches. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. My it's children, scary. when they see roaches, yeah. they jump out in the air. They almost can fly. Even grown men, macho men, I've seen them jump when there's a cockroach going across the house. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like if a zombie walked through. Okay, we're, I'm interested. We're going to give you some really good facts and figures and details about roaches as we continue here on What's Bugging You, brought to you by our friends at Sandwich Isle Pest Solutions. And by the way, prevention, that might be the cure. At Sandwich Isle, we believe the best way to protect your home from unwanted pests is not through control, but through prevention. Pest prevention is a unique concept perfected by Sandwich Isle in 1997. Over the years, we have continued to improve our service effectiveness with the many technological advances in our industry. Today, Sandwich Isle's pest prevention is recognized as one of the most environmentally responsible and effective approaches in the industry. Expect more and get it with Sandwich Isle Pest Solutions. Simply put, if we cannot solve your pest problem, we'll keep coming back at no additional cost until you are completely satisfied. And if, for any reason, you're not completely satisfied, we'll refund your last payment, no questions asked. Remember, pests can no longer be considered simply a nuisance. Keeping pests out of your home is critical for your health and the health of your family. Don't settle for anything less than the best. That's Sandwich Isle Pest Solutions. Expect more and get it. Ah, uh, once again, La Cucaracha. It's sort of interesting because Dr. Marisol Quintanilla uh, is uh, the director of training and a board-certified um, entomologist and comes from a world word, I guess, where you heard that song, La Cucaracha, as a little child. Oh, yes, yeah, I, yeah. That's his, what I know is that it? song now, very you know, well. First of all, I know that the, the whole subject of cockroaches is um, it's a huge subject. I mean, the, I don't know how many kinds of roaches there are. must be millions of them. <laughs> thousands. Yeah, thousands of different kinds. Uh, do we have any way to pinpoint how many different ones we have in Hawaii? Maybe about um, maybe about seventy five, but most of those do not um, live with us. They might mm -hmm. be in the forest. Um, it's about four or five that cause a lot of problem in people's houses. Commensal roaches that live with us. Okay, now here's what we're going to talk about today: identifying if you have a problem and doing something about it. There can be some things, remedial things, and we'll tell you what they are, uh, uh, Marisol, of what people can do to be more proactive in their own properties. But then there gets to a point where it's above the pay grade of a homeowner to be able to deal with this, and that's when Sandwich Isle gets a call. Uh, I, I would imagine uh, when you're doing your training on the people that you do at Sandwich Isle that one of the big trainings outside of you know, the checking the Centricon and making sure the bait system's working for termites is where do you find and how do you get rid of roaches? Yes, just this morning, right, right mm. before mm -hmm. I came to talk to you, um, at 7 a.m. in the morning, I gave a training on mm. roaches. I gave a talk on yeah. roaches and they had an, a quiz at the end. Um, we talked about the different roaches in Hawaii and what products to use and where to look for them and yeah. etc. So yes, people would get even if they think, well, I don't have any roaches. They're wrong. 
<laughs> in Hawaii, everybody yeah, has everybody. roaches. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's sort of funny, but one of the recent uh, uh, you know slogans here at San Mateo has been you've heard Michael both the saying it many times, and we're going to talk about this in a future program pretty soon. There are two kinds of houses, right? Those that have termites and those that will get them. Yeah, but you could say the same thing about roaches. Yeah, yeah. In Hawaii, there's only two types of houses: those yeah. that have roaches and those. Who think they don't have roaches, but still have but roaches, still have and, and those I, that will get roaches. I guess I, you could say three types of houses. I can tell you one thing that we had at our house not too long ago. Every now and again, my wife would yell, roach, and I'd go trying to kill it. Because most of us live indoor, outdoor. We have doors open, windows open. It's hot. We have the breeze going through. In come the bugs. But one thing that I thought was funny is we hadn't had any visible roaches in the house for about a year, maybe longer than a year. And I noticed that we had under the sink a problem yeah, of water. They, liked, uh, they yeah. love to be under the sink. So they I, love wet. Yeah, so I looked in there and there was a roach. And of course, I, I smacked it. But it turned out to be that my uh, Jerry Peters from uh, HPS Construction Services, another show that we do on Fix It Friday, which you guys are part of, uh, came over and to replace the inside floorboard. And when they took out the cabinet bottom, boy, there were a lot of roaches. And he just said, you know what? Every home in Hawaii, behind the walls and under the foundations, I don't care how clean you live, there's roaches there. So people shouldn't feel bad, should they? <laughs> no, um, roaches are, sadly, roaches are just a giving in Hawaii. Yeah, I mean, life, right? part of yeah. paradise of Hawaii. But what is about the bad points? I mean, you know, they're ugly, they're scary. Uh, what about, what, what are they, what do roaches do that can be harmful to us? Oh, roaches are serious business. Um, roaches carry, um, carry bacteria. Mm -hmm. And. On their feet? On their, whatever. Yeah, yeah, on their feet. Yeah. Um, they, they defecate wherever they go. Mm -hmm. um, on their feces, on their feet. Also, they also can carry some nematode parasites. Uh, such as yeah. trichinella and some other kind of... So these are little things you can't even see, but they're on the cockroach. They're running around on the cockroach. Or can you see it sometimes? Uh, well, you their feces you can see. Yeah, the course. bacteria you yeah. cannot see. Mm -hmm. So those, those nematode parasites you cannot see. But you'll definitely see the effects. Mm -hmm. You know, if you... Some of these bacteria will give you diarrhea mm -hmm. or um, some other... Yeah. What is, what, is, what is that horrible smell that some people smell when you find a roach infestation? There's this very strong smell. Uh, is it urine? Is it feces? Is it all of that? What is that, that, that scent that they give off, seemingly? <laughs> well, it's all of that put mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, their, their, their feces, their urine. Um, it's, well, roaches are not very clean. Yeah. They're definitely not very clean. Um, many roaches they live in sewage sewers. Yeah. And lots of nutrients. Why not? Right. They they feed on sewage. Mm -hmm. You know, our second half food. And they will come in from sewage pipes and then yeah. go into our house and feed on food and they are they they're not very picky about what they eat. They're mm -hmm. not very clean. Okay, so as we get into that it would seem then if you're moving into a home brand new before you move in, maybe you should check wherever there's... What are some of the things that people can do? To, all right. You know, we've had... We've just been tented. Everything's dead. Now let's... You know, we... I guess eliminating food source. By the or, way, yeah. if you've just been tented, mm -hmm. cockroaches are not dead. Oh, they can live past that. Right? Oh, they yeah. can live yeah. past that because it takes about 10 times the um, the concentration of the fumigant. Ah. You, you would need to apply 10 times more fumigant to kill the roaches than you need to kill the termites. Mm -hmm. Because the uothica, which is the egg case of roaches, is very well sealed and the gas won't penetrate in there unless you have very high concentrations. What about the actual... I, I can tell you that um, because my wife's a realtor and quite often Sandwich Isle will come out and do an inspection and a tenting you know, during a transaction. And always there's bugs. I mean, you know, you go into the house after it's been tented. Uh, now you use a lot of orange. We'll talk about that a little bit, too, uh, and how that works on, on certain other pests. But you see a lot of dead ones. But obviously what you're saying is maybe that's just... Oh, it'll kill the roaches, yeah. but it won't kill the all the, the, the eggs. Yeah. No, yeah. so ah. the, 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 you will eventually have the problem again because the eggs are there. Why are some houses more roaches than others outside of the... outside? In other words... Are we leaving food scraps around? Is that a problem? Okay, or water? Well, Why do we have roaches? Well, roaches need three things mm -hmm. in order to survive. Three things. Food, water, and shelter. Mm -hmm. 
food if you leave dirty dishes yeah. on the sink overnight. Yeah. You are leaving a plate of food I for the roaches like to a eat. Bu- buffet, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's buffet. Yeah, yeah. Um, s- crumbs. Just about every house I go, you can find crumbs or pieces of food that f- have fell behind the oven. Yeah. Between the refrigerator, underneath something. We all know mm. there's a little bit of food somewhere, behind yeah. somewhere. Yeah. And I heard one thing. What's interesting? A long time ago, Michael Botha and I were doing one of these programs. And by the way. Uh, we'll tell you about how to get in touch with Michael and everybody at Sandwich Isle and an opportunity maybe even to join the firm because they're hiring right now. Um, said that, you know, one of the biggest places in a toaster, if you have a toaster or a toaster oven, it may look like there's no crumbs, but always remember that things fall in the bottom. Oh, and yeah. every now and again, you'll open that drawer and there will be a big cockroach in your toaster. Oh, cockroaches love toasters. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, yeah. love, cockroaches yeah. love toasters. They go in the toaster all the time. Yeah. They also like coffee makers. You know, really? the coffee machine. Yeah. Um, well, they, they like need their caffeine, right? They have to have their coffee in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> sure. they, they, they can get in all kinds. I mean, they can get into all kinds mm-hmm. of machines. They can get into microwave ovens. Yeah. Sometimes it's incredible. You can turn on the microwave and the roach can be in there and it won't die. <laughs> You know, on a previous program, even though we're talking about roaches today, let's talk about these mealybugs for just a second. Yeah. Some of the ones that are the ones that love rice or pasta or grains. You told me they can go in a jar. How in the world do they eat it? How, do they, how can they do that? And you're talking about Indian meal moth. Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, they will lay the eggs right at the entrance of a jar. Right mm-hmm. at the border. And then the eggs hatch. And a very, very, very small, mm-hmm. tiny worm comes out. Very, very little. So he can go into a very, very, very little hole. So you open and a bag of pasta or a she, jar, you know, and there's bugs in it. You know, and you think, how did I do that? I mean, that's a sealed package for, for heaven's sakes. Well, they, yeah. they, they, they will chew a little hole. If You know, it's a pasta. Mm-hmm. It's a bag. Yeah. They can chew a little hole in the bag. Just a little one. You can't yeah. see it. Very little because it's a little warm. And it, the, the the larva, mm-hmm. the caterpillar actually will li- will grow up inside the bag yeah. of food. So then very you see that right? it's really big, but, yeah. but when it came in, it was very little. So you can't see even the hole. Okay. Well, uh, like I said, I could turn that into a whole, we could turn that into a whole pro- program and we do, will someday. But I still think that Maybe letting people know some of the front that they can do, like standing water, like food. But like you said, almost every kitchen has food in it somewhere, inadvertently. Yeah, but people need to try to keep food um, sealed, to keep put food in the refrigerator, have sealed package and make it less available um, to roaches so you don't so you don't have a huge infestation. And also Water. Water mm-hmm. is very important to, to them, especially to German cockroaches. Now, wait a second. Let's make sure the people understand. German cockroaches, those look like the 747, right? They're the big no, 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 no. Ger- that's-, that, that, that's the American cockroach. Oh, okay, that one is uh, 747. And by the way, American cockroaches are not from America, and German cockroaches are not, not from Germany. <laughs> <laughs> what happened is that that's where they were first described, mm-hmm. but they have become... Most of these have become distributed worldwide, and many of them were originally native of Africa, you know, they, mm-hmm. or came from Latin America or something like that, but they were not originally from the U.S. or from In- Germany. Interestingly enough, though, we talked earlier a little bit about bed bugs and traveling. I would imagine that the inadvertent travel that we have, like in Hawaii, everything almost we consume is brought here. And that means 90% food, of our food is imported. Everything. Yeah, so that means that that's a, there is a... a uh, a freeway to Hawaii for roaches, right? I mean, they just get on the on the on the on the truck and in the boat, and and here they are. Roaches love cardboard. Mm-hmm. They lay eggs. They lay their uuthika, which is an egg case. Mm-hmm. They love to lay it in corrugated cardboard. Can board. they live with that al- alone? Um, you know, n- maybe not on. Uh, well, they they might live on it if there's some moisture in it, mm-hmm. but they'll certainly use it for travel they will they will use it as shelter it's mm-hmm. a good hiding spot it's a good place to lay eggs but they will find water and food elsewhere but they they can feed on things that we wouldn't feed on you know yeah, like paper and- i i wanted to and i will ask uh, uh marisol this and this is very very important because i do know a lot of times when you're treating 
uh, when Sam Machado goes out to a home to treat a problem. The, the big disappointment quite often in a family is all the family memorabilia, the photograph albums, all of the storage and, and, the, and the mementos of the past, if they're in the attic or in the garage or in the thing, if there's roaches in there, they, they ruin things. They ruin things. They do. They'll feed on paper. They will they, they also their feces and mm -hmm. they, 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 they mess up. They, yeah. they, they will mess up books. Yeah, and no, that big, big problem with that. So that means that there must be ways that you can offer to people, to, all right, if you're going to store something, here's how you should store it. Can they get in everything, or can we keep? Can we prevent them from getting in with a good seal? Oh, the, you can tape, prevent. Right? Masking <laughs> tape, forget about it. They just eat right through that. They can eat masking yeah. tape. <laughs> well, you know, they are, they are challenging, mm -hmm. but... If um, if the place is very clean and they do not have access to to water, and the and the container is very well sealed, they'll have a harder time. Uh, keeping stored cardboard boxes at your place is yeah. a bad idea. Yeah. So th remember, there's three things you the cockroach need: water, food, and shelter. If you have a lot of stuff, if you're a hoarder. And have a lot of yeah. stuff, a lot of cardboard boxes in your house. You're providing lots of places for them to hide, lots of places for them to lay their eggs. So that's one of the things that can be done. It's mm -hmm. remove the clutter. You know, one thing that's really interesting because of the TV reality show, The Hoarders, more people are saying, people don't really live like that. Well, that's not true. Even if you don't live like that, even living like that a little bit provides that. Oh, for sure. Yeah. You don't need you don't need ten thousand cardboard yeah, yeah, boxes. Yeah. You don't need only a few. Yeah. Now let's talk about what do you do before we move on because the second part of our discussion today on the two categories of pests are bed bugs. We're going to return to that in a minute. But I, I do want to ask you when a problem has become apparent, when somebody has a problem in their home or their restaurant or their business, how aggressive does sandwich I'll get? How do you deal with the different infestations of roaches? Okay. Um Well, one of the first things that we do is inspect, mm -hmm. inspect problems. Many times there's a leak um, and there's a water problem. Yeah. There's mm -hmm. water availability. So trying to inspect and also entrances. If you're getting the American cockroach, which is, is actually a cockroach that likes to live outside. Mm -hmm. If it's getting inside your house, there's probably an entrance point. Is that the flying one? Yeah, the B, oh, they call them the B52s. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. right. 747 yeah, 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 B52s. Yeah. They 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 live outside. So if you're yeah. getting them inside your house, there's probably some entrance, etc. So one of the first thing to do is to inspect and to try to point out conducive conditions mm -hmm. and try to remediate those things. Um, another thing is to apply um, insecticides. Mm -hmm. Apply insecticides that perimeter, will kill them. On the perimeter, inside, everywhere. On the perimeter, outside mm -hmm. the house, and also inside the house, especially focusing in kitchen and in bathrooms. Because they love kitchen and bathrooms. Kitchen, of course, there's food. And bathrooms water, also probably, have water. Yeah. It's the food and water combination. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you need food and water. Um, wait, wait, wait. I'm glad you brought that up because every now and again, like I said, my wife would yell, roach. It was almost, almost always in the kitchen. <laughs> well, then you know what yeah, you know why they're in the go. kitchen. So you know, so a bedroom is like there's not much opportunity in a bedroom. But I know that unless you eat in the bedroom all the time. That's what I was going to say. A lot of people, a midnight snack is food for the cockroaches. Oh yes. Oh boy. If you right. if you like midnight snacking mm -hmm. and leave your snack out in the bedroom, then you'll have cockroach in the bedroom. When people listen to uh, the sandwich aisle, uh, uh, you know, promises and whatnot. I do know that quite often people want instant gratification. Doesn't sometimes a treatment meet or eradication of roaches that you need to revisit? Why is that? Okay. Um, I, I, from before, um, I need to say we also apply baits. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons oh, why yeah. you need to revisit is that the baits um, kill the ones that are feeding on the bait. Mm -hmm. So the roaches feed on the bait, mm -hmm. and then they die. It's a lot of good food with a little bit of poison. Okay. So then there's eggs spread in different areas, and those eggs will hatch, and you'll get new ones. And if the bait is finished already, mm -hmm. then you'll have a new yeah, starting in sorry, sp sure. station. Yeah. Besides... When you apply insecticide, it won't kill every single roach. Those egg cases are very protected. Mm -hmm. They are 
almost it's like a, a, a tank they're very mm -hmm. protected they're very sealed and insecticides won't get inside plus roaches many times place those egg cases in areas where we don't see where we sure in between the roof and little crooks and crannies mm -hmm. in the closet etc they'll put mm -hmm. them where they're very protected and we want where we are not likely to apply insecticide and then they will hatch and you'll have a new infestation yeah. that's why multiple applications sometimes are necessary i know it's it's really funny because on my regular show we'll quite often the Subject of cockroaches will come up. All these people call up with all of these ways that they got rid of them. But obviously, they don't all work because they have to keep doing it over and over again. Some people like to paint a little something across their threshold, you know, if their doors are open. And I would imagine that's good, that's proactive, but it's not going to guarantee that they won't fly in or come in some other way. Uh, many times, they come in through a box of groceries. Mm -hmm. You go to the store and you buy groceries in that box. There could yeah. be lots of egg cases. Yeah. Ooh, thika, you know? A lot of us are recycling boxes because of the the, ba the bags uh, that are disappearing in the stores. I would imagine that if you that's food, you know, there's little bits of food, you're probably carrying that cockroach back and forth. Even the if store. there's no food, mm. even if there's no food, boxes, corrugated cardboard boxes is one of the favorite places for them to lay their eggs. Let's talk before we go to a break and start talking about bed bugs again, icky crawly things. Uh, Outside of the fear factor and the unsightliness and the scariness of, of cockroaches, remind everybody that they are disease car uh, carriers and that and people can get sick if there's a lot of roaches. Yes, um, roaches carry around with them bacteria, um, some nematode parasites, and just about anything. Mm -hmm. They can fungi, mold, etc. Everything you have to imagine. They're visiting bathrooms, sewage junk truck anything and then they're feeding on your food mm -hmm. and and f uh, defecating on your cupboards in your food pantry mm -hmm. where's your dishes so yeah. you can imagine that that's a problem okay now one thing that we need to uh, re you know re-educate people about is that when you all go out there to do a problem, when it gets to be an infestation, there's a, a process that you go through to eliminate it. One of the things when people try to do that on their own may be a problem. You need to explain to people that when you see a pesticide or something in a store and it says for outside use only, what does that mean? And why is it a bad idea to maybe use that stuff inside the house? Things are labeled for a reason mm -hmm. if 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 it says for outside use it might not be something safe to consume it might not be something that can be placed in mm -hmm. a kitchen in in, in, a, in a food area or it might they might not want it to come in contact with children with pets etc so um you need to follow the label mm -hmm. when you see any insecticide any kind of pesticide read the label and follow the label then your guys come up, they have like a costume that they wear. When they do our stuff, I mean, your people are extremely well protected. They're wearing gloves. They're wearing eye care. A lot of time they're wearing long sleeve shirts and hats. So it's expected that in your industry. Uh, and do they they're wearing according to the label. Some some insects that, that they use do not require all of that. Mm -hmm. So we use what the label requires. Of course, good idea. So that, now, and that's another thing. Before we go to a break. Let's talk about sometimes you guys have growing concerns. I know that, you know, the family keeps growing up again. Uh, entry level positions can lead to good things and you get to do both because not only do you get to train people, but probably you get to find out how your training is working, how, they, how they're working in the field. Yes, because I, I get to go with them in the mm -hmm. field and evaluate their, their work. Uh, how is the intake uh, process? What's the best way? Should they go on to sandwichisle.com and click employment or should they come and visit? What's, what's the best? They can turn in an application mm -hmm. on online. You know, um, many of the um, opportunities are indeed dot com. Um, also, they can go into sandushal.com. dot com. Um, one of the fastest ways is just to call Eileen yeah. I, and at the Sandushal number. It. She's just the ask, recruiter, right? Yeah, yeah she's yeah, the HR, yeah. the human yeah. resource mm -hmm. person. Um, so you, get, you can call Sandushal number mm -hmm. and call it and talk to Eileen. And I'll give you that number, and then you're going to have to learn it. Four five six seven seven one six. I've known it for years. Now it's your turn. Four five six seven seven one six. When we come back on what's bugging you, uh, Doctor Marisol Quintanilla and I are going to talk about yuck bed bugs. There's a good chance that your house may be the single largest investment that you ever make. It's also your home. It's where you and your family spend a lot of time. It's more than just a place. 
There are many types of homes, but for our purposes today, there are really only two types of homes, those that have termites and those that will eventually get termites. That's because there's no such thing as a termite-proof home. Call Sandwich Isle today and schedule your free inspection. Why choose Sandwich Isle's pest prevention over pest control? The last thing I want to worry about are bugs and centipedes around my wife and kids. At Sandwich Isle, we believe in pest prevention, not pest control. The bottom line is we want to prevent these pests from getting into your house in the first place. We look at things like caulking and sealing gaps, holes and cracks around your house. We do a lot of things that are different, that don't involve any pesticides whatsoever. I love Sandwich Isle. That's Sandwich Isle Pest Solutions. Expect more and get it. Yep, even chickens have songs. It's called Chicken Dance, and every now and again we talk about feral chickens. And that's a problem here, too. Uh, Dr. Marisol Quintanilla from San Rizal Pest Solutions in the house. Welcome back to our final segment of this uh, episode of What's Bugging You. We try to be topical, and in the news in the last uh, several months, a lot. And some of you may remember a, a commercial that we were doing, oh, maybe about a year or so ago, with San Rizal. And, and it sort of read, you know, they used to get one or two phone calls about bed bugs a month, and now it's several a day. Are there more bed bugs? Are we, are we seeing a resurgence of them? We seem to know how to get rid of them, but we don't seem to get rid of the problem. Maybe, Dr. Quintanilla, probably what we have to blame is our economy and tourism, that a lot of times people coming here bring in unwanted guests as a bed bug. Are, what other ways can they get to us? Well, definitely um, tourism is associated with bed bugs. New York is the number one city for bed bugs. Is that right? Las mm -hmm. Vegas, I think, is number three or mm -hmm. something like that. I bet we we're are on also, the list too. We're on the list. Yeah. Um, cities that have a lot of incoming new people, mm -hmm. a lot of travel, are the ones that have the most bed bugs. You know, it's interesting that uh, some societies actually probably put up with them without even realizing exactly what it is. Uh, but but I, I think the biggest shame is when a child gets bitten by bed bugs. What are, what's the bad part about the bite of a bed bug outside of it being a rash and being a problem? Can you actually get sick? Well, there's a lot of research that has been done about that. Mm -hmm. A lot of research. And so far, bed bugs have been found to not transmit diseases. Mm -hmm. Thank they goodness. have yeah. a potential mm -hmm. to transmit Chagas disease. Which is? Um... It's a disease that it's common in some Latin American, in tropical Latin American countries. Mm -hmm. um, and it's transmitted by the kissing bug. And the bed bug is very similar to the kissing bug. They belong to the same order. And they can transmit that disease. But we do not have, um, we do not have enough we don't have a yeah. source of Chagas disease, and bed bugs do not transfer Chagas disease as well as the kissing bug. Uh, so the kissing bug the that only... sounds ominous. It's like you're getting kissed and you're getting a disease while it's happening. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, the kissing bug feeds on blood too. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. a very similar behavior as bed bugs, but it's much. It's a much bigger bug. One of the things that I saw, and it was so tragic, is a child is defenseless against bed bugs. And I, and I would imagine that most people, adults that get them, it's an irritant. Maybe they get a little bit of a rash. But from what I understand, some of these things are serious. I mean, they get to be very uncomfortable. They cause people to scratch. And when they scratch, they, they get little infections on their skin. So it's, it's an ugly thing to get. Yeah, yeah. Some people can get very big welts mm -hmm. on, on, on their skin. Um, bed bugs, really, the biggest effect is social and, and, and psychological. Of course. People yeah. that get bed bug infestations suffer tremendously. Um, they they become asocial. They do not want people to know that they have bed bugs. Mm -hmm. um, they also stop visiting their friends because maybe they don't want to transmit bed bugs to other people. They don't want people to know. They're ashamed. So bed bugs can cause a lot of psychological problems. When you get to a place where there's an infestation, do they want to know where they come from? I mean, now it's too late to do it to find out. I mean, they're there. But that means that what, whatever brought them could bring them again if they didn't take 
you know, some sort of proactive measure to, to investigate it. Uh, what, what would you say the majority of homes, say in Hawaii, where if somebody says, look, uh, Dr. Quintanilla, I didn't travel. We haven't, nobody's traveled. We got bed bugs. Did they well, buy a used couch? Did they buy a used mattress? How did they get them? Well, there's always a blaming game going on. There's mm-hmm. always some reason that you find. But the truth is, anybody can get bed yeah. bugs. Mm-hmm. You can get them, let's say you go to a library or a store yeah, or, yeah. or a public place. Mm-hmm. And the person sitting by you has bed bugs um, traveling with them in their clothes. They mm-hmm. can then hitch a ride on you. You can, of course, in a hotel, that's one of the easiest way to get them. Um, you can buy used furniture. Mm-hmm. They can be in the furniture. They, they, you can go to a restaurant, and that restaurant could have a bed bug problem. And mm-hmm. they can be then they can travel on your clothes. They'll go in the grooves of your shoe, hitch a mm-hmm. ride on the grooves of your shoe, and get off at your house and settle so on in your other bed. Words, what you're telling us, the grim reality is that there's no way you can avoid contact with them. They're somewhere. But once you got them, what are we going to do? All of us are. Mm-hmm at risk mm-hmm. of getting bed bugs. There's some steps that we can take in order to prevent a severe infestation. I think there's really no way to prevent an inf- uh, a problem at all. I mean, there's, I mean, ac- except you live as a hermit and never contact with any anybody and don't go in any social, mm-hmm. I mean, in, in any common areas, but you can't prevent it from becoming a severe infestation in your mm-hmm. house by inspecting your bed once in a while, by keeping an eye on on bed bugs, knowing what they are, and if you have, if you get an in bed bug problem, acting to it early enough. Because yeah, if say, you find yep. it when it's disestablished and they're everywhere inside the house, you know mm. what that means? That means that you've had it for years mm. and you haven't... Bed bugs are not... They don't shout out that they're there. They're they're like ninjas. They're mm. hiding. They're feeding on you when you are sleeping mm. so you don't realize that they're feeding at you. They put you anesthesia. They put you local anesthesia. So you don't feel it. You yeah. don't feel it. Mm. Many people don't react. They don't get any wealth. So they don't know. There's no way to know that you mm-hmm. have them. And during all that time, you can be carrying the bed bugs that mm-hmm. you have in your house. You can be carrying them to your favorite restaurant. You can be carrying it to your friend's house. You can be carrying it to your mom's house. You can be carrying it to all the places that you frequent often. Mm-hmm. And once you discover you have bed bugs and you get rid of it in your house, you'll bring them back from all the different yeah, areas yeah. you that, introduced them that, to. That, that's so disconcerting because there was one guy that said, I remember several, this was a couple of years ago, and Michael both and I were talking about this, and it was like, Every time this guy goes to his auntie's house, he comes home and he has bed bugs. Well, well that means that now, he has now, auntie what, probably now, has bed bugs. Yeah, and which means also now he's got it because this is an equal opportunity traveler, right? He just wants to get to ride on you. But what I think is interesting is that unlike, say, mosquitoes, which you say have a relatively short lifespan, let's talk about bed bugs because from what I understand, you can have a bed bug in your guest room bed and nobody's in that bed for a long time and then somebody comes and they get bitten the same day i mean so they don't have to eat all the time do they no no in fact bed bugs can be without feeding for more than a year i can't stand it that's terrible news. they can be hiding let's say you mm. you have bed bugs in your house and you go travel to the ma- mainland mm-hmm. and you leave your house empty for a year yeah during that year they're not reproducing. They can't reproduce without feeding. Yeah. But they're just hanging on. They're it's, just, it, no, okay. they're just waiting en- for you to come back to get their next meal. As an entomologist, <laughs> explain, because most of us just plain wouldn't believe that. You know, it's because we know that we get hungry after a few hours. So we're not going to certainly last for a year. But even the human can last a long time uh, without. What happens physically or scientifically to this, this insect that it can shut everything down and, and literally not be active? For a long time. Well, when there's no food around, it just shuts everything down. It mm-hmm. doesn't reproduce. It doesn't move. It doesn't. I was going to say, it's not, not spending any, too much. No, nope. that's energy, right? It doesn't. It doesn't waste any energy. Mm-hmm. Only when you come back, when mm-hmm. you come back from your one-year trip, and they smell, you know, the CO2 constant. You know, there's higher mm-hmm. CO2. They, they they feel your heat. They know your smell. You, like they know you're back. Yeah. They say, well, my food is back. They wait for you to fall asleep. Mm-hmm. 
When you're sleeping at their deepest, then they feed on you. Okay, now, I, I know that sounds pretty grim, and it sounds like there's no end to this. One of the things that, that we talked about earlier is heat. Uh, are, there any, uh, are there anything that is known that you can do to treat it with some sort of a spray? or, or I mean, what, what's... It- home, there's very little things that the homeowner can do to succeed against mm. bedbugs. Bedbugs are one of those things that are very hard to rid of. The homeowner, if you find bedbugs, Mm -hmm. The best step you can do is to call a professional pest control company. That's one of the things. Those insect, you know, those bug bombs, they don't work. Most things that you'll do, they don't work against pets. Some people ask, uh, well, what about if I just wash everything? But I wash all my clothes, wash all the bedding. Uh, Can can a bed bud make it through that cycle? Um, If you wash it, possibly they can float out of the water and Mm. come out of the washing machine. So washing it is probably not the best idea. You have to put it in the dryer first. Mm -hmm. You put it in the hot dryer, leave it in the hot, in the high cycle, you know, in the high Mm -hmm. heat cycle for 10 minutes and then they will die and then you wash it. Yeah, see, because I heard when you come home from a trip, that's a great idea to do to your clothes right away. Put even, it in the dryer. Even not dirty clothes, clean clothes, every clothes in the dryer. In the dryer. But what about the suitcase? Well, that won't fit in the dryer. The suitcase won't fit in the yeah. dryer, but you can, um, w- you can with the um, hair dryer, mm-hmm. put it in the very oh, high well, heat that they, that almost b- burn hey, you, listen, and you can go in all the edges and yeah. all the seams slowly, and it's to make sure that it's long enough in every spot. I mean, I don't guarantee yeah. you that it'll kill everyone, but I think it'll kill most of them. Uh, or, I can it, tell you right it, now, it, even if you're bald, you better pay attention to what Marisol was saying. Buy a heavy duty hair dryer. <laughs> and have it in your even in the hotel when you get to the hotel. The hotels the hotel, usually have good yeah, hair dryers. They have them usually, right? Yeah, they have so good hair So maybe you should dryers. maybe you should hair dry your suitcase as you're checking out. I mean, <laughs> just go in the box. I think that these little things mean a lot because I know that you could tell horror stories about how bad it gets in some places. Oh, I have seen I have seen terrible situations, and once you have a terrible situation, it's very hard to solve because then the bed bugs are everywhere. There's eggs behind every the picture frames, mm-hmm. behind the picture frames full of bed bugs, in the floorboards, inside the electric outlets, underneath the electric outlets, mm-hmm. eggs, females, you know, mm-hmm. males, every every single type of nymphs inside the electric outlets you'll find them in every single hole in the usb ports of computer i, I you told me that one time yeah that's so they're there believe. yeah you it, they, I've, I've seen them there yeah, that's amazing okay uh now but all is not lost because if you call sandwich isle you're going to get to the bottom of that and there is an end to it and i guess maybe to be 100 percent free is hard what, first of all, somebody wants to know, what do they look like? That's a great question. I think you compared it one time before. It looks like a little apple seed. Yeah, they're about the size of an apple seed. Can you and see them moving? Not in the day. No, you won't yeah, see yeah. them. You won't see them in the day. But if you look underneath, if you look in your bed, mm-hmm. if you look underneath your sheets, in the edges, in the seams, then you can you can see them. And then you will see them moving. Do you recommend a an, an envelope or a, a cover for a mattress? Um, yes, Does it there's seal them in? A, I mean, you know, encasement. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, that is a good idea because that way they won't um, go inside the mattress and they won't go inside the box spring. Now there's another product that we are beginning to 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 use, which it's like a fitted sheet that mm-hmm. has a compound on it that when the bed bug um, it's on that feedy sheet for about 10 minutes. The bed bug will, will die. So it's a good preventative. Yeah. So you can put that fitted sheet on top of your you box spring. You got sandwich aisle? Yes. Oh, so boy. You, so you can prevent it and you can you can put it in your bed and it would be a, it would be a preventative measure. So if a bed bug hits you to ride on you, climbs up on your bed, it'll die. Okay, that's going to be it for this program. Remember, you can go online to sandwichisle.com and check this out again. So for Dr. Marisol Quintanilla and all of the hardworking folks at, at, at Sandwich Isles, I'm Mike Buck. Thanks for being with us today. And remember, 456-7716. The number is 456-7716. Yikes.
Well, that's our show for today. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time. And if something is bugging you, jump online and get debugged at sandwichisle.com. That's sandwichisle.com.